I was setting out from Louisville on an uncharacteristically clear day, heading for Everest Harbour to meet up with the crew. We'll be seeing the new and updated Louisville in some detail very soon, but for today we wanted to head out and investigate another new feature coming to Star Citizen 319, Salvage Contracts. These are essentially missions that do not pay out directly, rather you pay for the right to pursue them, and instead the credits you recoup are as a result of salvaging the ships, including recovering their cargo and, in a new change, recovering their weapons and components. That new change can also be used to hot swap or fit weapons to your own ships out in the field, and also makes almost any ship a capable salvage vessel depending on its cargo space. I've been flying the Kepler a lot lately and I feel like I'm getting the hang of it. I hope to become such an expert with the ships I like. Oh, I definitely wouldn't call myself an expert. New, new, new. <laughs> there is no warranty when you fly with me. <laughs> We wouldn't be heading out in it immediately though, as we swapped for another Drake vessel, a Corsair. I would suggest stopping for fuel, because you might be able to get all the way out there. You mean oh, yeah. getting back? Yeah, <laughs> back. Corsairs generally could jump a very long way, right? So we might be able to get out there and... Yeah, I think it only be like half this the contract we'd taken on was an illegal salvaging of a battlefield. It was a huge distance from us, and the buy-in was 150,000 credits. We had no idea what to expect, but we were excited to start pulling weapons and components from the wrecks. I seriously don't think people will pay the 150k to find out what's well, out there. it's PTU, isn't it, you know? So you never know. Our understanding of these high-cost, unlawful contracts is that they are open to any and all players to try and claim. This meant that while we were out there, we could encounter other players looking to profit from the wreck site. It was also possible, as the mission kind of implied, that hostile NPC ships might descend upon us as we picked apart the remains of their friends and vanquished enemies. Just over 10 minutes for this jump, just so you know. And the battle seemed to have occurred a considerable distance from the orbital plane as well. Still, before we knew it, we'd arrived. Hey, look at it. Look at all this stuff. Oh, we got chips. I don't see any players. Constellation Andromeda. Andromeda. Freelancer and a Karak. Oh, there's a, um, there's a marker that says remaining salvage, salvage the battlefield. Oh yeah, look at that. So is there a bonus that you get for finishing this or something? Maybe. Maybe there is. Now a theme we've noticed on most of these ships out here is that CRG have opted to use ships where the components are not yet accessible for some reason. Going aboard. And on our first attempt to strip this freelancer, there was some background drifting of the wrecks as well. We are still floating away from it. Wait, what? We are moving. Well, something's I'll moving. Get, I'll get into the pilots. Okay, cool. Exit. Oh, it's still moving. We'd move on to a Carrack wreck to see if the same drift was occurring here as well. It wasn't a major obstacle really, but documenting these things for science is sometimes useful. Wait, are you moving now? Because it is moving now. No, I'm not moving. I don't know what's going on. But I had an idea on getting aboard. It's moving away from us right now, so if we go the other side, it might, it might just drift towards me. I'm jumping out now. Okay, oh, it's coming, it's moving quite quickly. I'm in line to get on top of it though. Okay, it stopped moving for some reason. Okay, it does have a physics grid on top. It is moving. This thing is definitely moving. I can see it moving, like, from on board. Yeah, yeah, it's slowly drifting. I'm gonna go inside and see if I can unlock the components. Yep. Hab deck. Elevator works. <laughs> it's like Smoke Monster from Lost is in, in front of the um, medical bay. In order for components or weapons to be removed from the ship, the item ports for the ship need to be unlocked. There's a new keybind, and as this was our first time trying it on an unpowered ship, I had no idea if it had worked or not. I didn't get any warnings or anything, but I'm assuming it's because it's powered down. I'm gonna have to blow this door open with the... Okay, I can see the guns now. Now, on this first attempt, the keybinds to unlock the item ports had seemingly not worked, but there is another way to unlock these items for collection, soft death of the ship itself. Okay, go ahead and soft death this thing. Yeah, uh, that's a good call, it, it's not moving.
Yes, okay, I've got it now. The weapons you can detach them now, yeah. Oh, great. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I've got one right now. Oh, yeah, I see it. I'm going to put them up next to the ship here. We'll pull off all of the weapons and then we'll move on to the next one. There is an indicator on the item being pulled that shows which direction force must be applied to get it to detach from the item port of the ship. Alright, I just pulled a laser cannon off this freelancer. Before long, we had a nice collection of rhinos ready to be loaded onto our Corsair, and Arathorn was inbound to pick them up. If you keep backing right. up, I'll let you know when to stop. I look like I can see all of the attachment points on the Corsair. But manipulating objects in zero G is never completely straightforward. They're all occupied, but ooh, 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 no! We're about to have a space accident. I bumped into a gun while I was tractor beaming. I see. Yeah, I, I think we're okay. <laughs> Gun spinning. <laughs> yeah. But now we have a cargo bay full of rhinos. Now you're walking by your ship in the hangar or at when they're on display. Yeah, right, Swan. But at this present moment, the physics of such objects lying in the back of a ship or stacking atop each other is still quite problematic and prone to freaking out. We were moving on to a constellation Andromeda while Vlaz was about to make another discovery about these wrecks. Yeah. Oh, there's cargo in here. Yep. Yeah, this, this ship looks like it's already been salvaged. Well, no cargo. What's your clear all on? Uh... I'm gonna go to the cockpit again. See if I can right. unlock it. Science. Oh, ship port's unlocked. Okay, this time I got the message for it. And once again, the exterior doors locked once I was aboard. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're also in the back, the very back one. Ship is moving. The thing they want to test. Why would they make this mission have just a bunch of ships that don't have pullable components? For now, we'd only be taking the four rhinos from this Connie. We'd learn some tricks on getting more out of them in future, but at this time, we were not sure how much functionality remained in these husks. Turrets are not visible. I think turrets are stowed, right? Arathorn would be heading over to collect now. Roger that. Heading towards them. Okay, that leaves us there. I can see through into the cargo bay from outside. In fact, there's actually gaps. And the mission would throw us another oddity. Oh, trespassing. trespassing. What? Okay, trespassing. Get, you can get. What does it matter for trespassing? Yeah, yeah there's no cavalry out here. We gotta be careful when we're stuck in these. Uh, there's a lot of potential for bad physics interactions. I should get out of the way. Yeah, what I'll do, I'll just chuck them in and then we can worry about their stability once they're in. I don't want to crush you with one. <laughs> Inside the cargo bay was a mess, but it was stable. Vlaz had cargo he wanted to load as well, though. I have all my stuff sitting outside the uh, freelancer if you guys want to come look at it. Okay, yeah, we could go grab some stuff down there. I'll go back to the cargo bay because those um, rhinos all stacked up like that, they have the potential to cause some mishaps. I'm just over here salvaging and it's still moving. With more cargo to be loaded, we'd need to make some space. And with weapons this big, that is a delicate operation. See all the, see all the weapons next to Look, I'm uh -oh. going to try and do something with uh -oh. this cargo. So I go about trying to move and kind of stack them at the front end of the bay. They're more stable. And it was kind of smooth, but the physics on these objects is extremely unpredictable. Gotta be what it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. God, they do not like being on top of each other, holy sh**. They, they've really got to figure something out with the physics. I, I would, I would restack. Sure, we'll be fine. If we're not, we'll have a great story to tell. Some of Vlad's cargo were actual boxes. We had space on the grid now for them by be keeping a close eye on how the fixed and loose cargo interacted. No. It took a while 
for me to get get this. I don't think you want green ones. And there were more weapons too. Kind yeah, of kind of a cool yeah, yeah, like it's making use of all parts of the animal. The real, I guess, thing to compare it to against is hole stripping, right? Mm. Grab that one and move it, because that's a very rebellious rhino, this one. Damn, we got all the boxes back here, like a lot. There was much more box cargo than I expected, and this is one of the really cool aspects of these missions. You don't know exactly what you might find, or how much it will be worth. Now, let me try and navigate my way back to the front of the deck here. We could go and sweep the carrack for cargo, but like, honestly, I don't know how safe it would be trying to get it aboard. Like, this yeah, is quite, there's I literally a rhino that, blocking the door. Right. We'd be heading back to sell off what we could. The cargo was a mix of weapons and odd boxes, so we'd probably need to make several stops. Do you think um, we'll, we'll make more than the 150,000 that we paid? I don't know. It is. Three does have a weapon shop and it's pretty closer. Does it? Her three? Yeah, her three has a weapon shop. Let's see what four M5As go for. I've got badges, M5As, a lot of rhinos, and the dregs. You got a lot of drugs. That's where all your money's coming from. A whole CC of ETAM? Hello. What was fun about that, like from my perspective, was like that you've got to like, go into the ship and like, you know, flashlight on and go up and then lock everything and come out. And it's it felt faster than hole stripping for sure. At Hurst and L3 station, we could find a weapon store that would buy our salvaged weapons. I think you can sell without storing it as long as somebody stays on the ship, right? No, yeah, I think everyone needs to be off the ship, yeah. At the time we were recording, there was a bug that allowed infinite sales if you did not store the ship. This has since been fixed, and we'd be sure to store the ship to ensure that the science was accurate. Here it is. Upstairs. I got it. And on the terminal here, we could sell the guns directly from the ship's cargo bay. Oh, they all appear. I can see them all. It wouldn't take long to get the guns unloaded, and just for what we had on board, which wasn't anywhere close to all of the weapons out there, we'd made 139,000 credits. This alone would almost have covered the cost of the mission, and we had yet to sell the cargo or hear about how much our vultures had made from hull stripping. <laughs> Not picking up anything on as uh, as cargo on the ship at the moment. Yeah, that's... Um. Not here anyway, I guess we move on. <clears throat> and then there were however many are being here right now. Some. Cargo's still here, the weapons are all gone, that's good to see. I couldn't sell at the admin terminal here at the station, but a trip to a less reputable location would definitely help. And at Grim Hex, we'd be looking to offload as much of the illicit cargo as possible. The armor I noticed, store. I noticed leaving the gun store at Person 3, there was like a threshold you were requesting services from a platinum bay to pull the data up. I am actually quite extremely hungry myself. So. Okay. Can we sell here? Let's find out. Yeah, we can. 5,000. 11,000. Ooh, 90,000. What maze is so crazy? So, 95,000. The stims and the sales codes are not really worth all that much. They're literally less sub 1,000. Um, so, we're making about 110k extra from selling off the drugs that we found. Oh, wow. 
So these missions are clearly very profitable. We didn't encounter any resistance this time out, but we'd be visiting all of the contracts in more detail in the coming days. And this time in the Caterpillar, which has enormously more storage space and ease of loading. How will we fare? Join us next time to find out. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Thank you all for your very generous support of the channel. You guys make this channel possible. And in this video, I'm especially thanking Juicebox3 43, who recently became a backer of the channel over on Patreon. Thank you Juicebox for your generosity and for your support of the channel. I am enormously grateful. Thank you. There was a big gap between this video and the previous videos because of Jump Town running this weekend. But there will be a mammoth epic Jump Town video coming featuring many different task forces and members of the org as it was nice to get everyone pulling together after Skunkopoly against a common enemy. We'll be back with more very soon.